So now that we have an idea of how the stack can be used to store and retrieve registers and other information, uh, we're going to build up a standardized process for a chunk of information that's going to be used for every procedure call. And primarily, we're going to look at whose responsibility it is, either the caller or the callee, to put that information on the stack at each point. We're going to build a stack frame, which is that chunk of information that corresponds to the procedure call itself uh, with the, uh, the parameters and the return values and then stored registers in local storage. Uh, and we're going to also take into account the fact that when, a, when the stack is, is being used, the stack pointer moves around a lot. Um, we want some sort of standard static place within the stack frame that we can point to that everything is relative to so that we always know that this particular argument is three above that location and this particular return value is five below that location or whatever. So we're going to use another pointer. We're going to add another pointer to our implementation called the frame pointer. And this frame pointer is going to inherit its location from the stack pointer. I'll show you how. And then it's going to be static within the context of a single procedure call. So a stack is going to move up and down, move up and down. And then when you make another procedure call, the frame pointer will change. And then the stack will continue to move up and down around that frame pointer. But the frame pointer will be static within the context of a single procedure call. So we're going to use the stack, the frame pointer to get local relative access to memory uh, for each procedure call. And we'll see how that works. So a standard way of doing this is to have, again, I'll slip out a frame here. A standard way of doing this is to have um, the stack pointer is always pointing at the top of the stack. Within the context of a single procedure or a current context, we might be using the stack for temporary storage. We could uh, store stuff there, retrieve it there. Anytime you need a bit of extra storage or, or anything, you can use the stack for that. Um, but then below that is going to be local variables. And then below that is going to be saved registers. And then below that is going to be the uh, context for the switch itself, where the uh, we'll talk about what goes in here a little bit later on. And then below that is going to be arguments and return values. So I'll show you exactly step by step how to construct the stack frame. But the idea is the frame pointer is static. It stays here as the stack pointer moves up and down. And then you can always say that the local variables, for example, you make a new variable called i, which is some loop index. It is always frame pointer minus 16 or something, right? And it depends on where you put it, but as long as you're consistent with the way you put it there, uh, then you can always access it relative to the frame pointer with a consistent offset. And this is, again, why this load and store uh, format in MIPS is so useful, is that you can have a pointer variable that is the uh, address in the load and store, and then an offset from that address, which gives you access to whatever it is on the stack that you're interested in. So the stack pointer always points to the top of the stack. The frame pointer always points to the bottom of the current frame. The data in the stack frame can be accessed either relative to the stack pointer or to the frame pointer. They're both in memory, pointing to memory at some location. But because the stack pointer moves, there's some advantages to using the frame pointer for consistent static access. So here's the whole process for building the stack frame. First thing we're going to do <clears throat> Uh, is we're going to assume <laughs> that we're in the context of, of executing code, and this existing stack frame is going to sit here. So here, let me just turn this off for a second, and then uh, it'll be easier to see. So we're going to assume that we're in the context of a current procedure, which means it already has a frame pointer and a stack pointer uh, pointing to the top and the relative offset inside the frame itself. Then if you want to call a procedure, what you're going to do first is you're going to push onto the stack any arguments that you want to send to the procedure and any return value or space for return values uh, that you might want to expect from the procedure. And again, you can use registers for this procedure, <laughs> for this procedure. You can use registers for this process, uh, but this is a more general idea which allows you to do more than four arguments and more than two return values should you need them as well as being able to call multiple procedures one from the next. So we're going to push our arguments and our space for return values. That I'm showing in yellow. And we just push it like we push anything else. We subtract the stack pointer, and we then store with LW that information into the memory. Then 
That's all we do to set up and we call the procedure using jump and link. The current value of the program counter gets stored in the return address uh, and we're into the procedure. But now what we have to do is set up the new stack frame for this procedure so that we can have access to all of the functionality of the stack. So first thing we're gonna do is put a new value into the frame pointer, but we can't do that if we expect to ever be able to get back to our old stack frame. So that means that before we put a new value of the frame pointer, we're gonna store the old value of the frame pointer. This uh, pointer here is gonna get stored on the stack, right? So we can get back to the previous frame. We're gonna store the caller's frame pointer, frame pointer value, we just store it on the stack. And then we're gonna set up a new frame pointer. So the old frame pointer is here, no longer accessible. And then we're gonna set the new frame pointer to be equal to the stack pointer. That initiates a new frame and everything we do is gonna be above that. Then we're gonna preserve any registers that we might need to use, including specifically the return address. And we're gonna allocate any space we might need for local variables within the procedure. So the green is gonna be any re registers like the return address. And the blue is gonna be any space for local variables. And then we're done. We have access to the frame. The frame pointer stays here. The stack pointer stays on the top of the stack. And we can access any of these things, including local variables, stored registers, and anything else from the previous frame relative to the frame pointer, right? We can go below the frame pointer to get to arguments and return values. We can go above the frame pointer to get to local variables and registers. So that's the complete construction of the stack frame. But what does that look like uh, in code? 